hello people of YouTube land and uh, those that follow Ted and I on Twitch and those that are part of the Critch Crew Gaming Discord. I am Traductus. I'm Ted. And uh, we <laughs> yes, we have a, we have another guest here today. Someone who's been watching all the Bond films with us. Uh, she's seen all Ever. the ones up up to this. <laughs> Uh, with the exception of uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, she missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> which means uh, which means I'm going to have to fucking stream that again sometime. We don't talk uh, about it. <laughs> it didn't happen. Can you guess how it ended? Wish it didn't. Um, On a fucking boat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I'm not even mad that I missed it. It's the last one that does. <laughs> um... Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. And this is the <laughs> Critch Crew Gaming Jade's Bond Review Podcast, where I, a Jade's Bond fanatic, and Ted, a newbie, and also Haley here, a newbie newbie, as in she has not seen any of them before we started doing this. Um, but <laughs> yeah, anyway, we, we, we get a uh, perspective of me being the diehard Bond fan, Ted being a filthy casual, and then we also have... Uh, you know, our guest here, giving her uh, <laughs> opinions, and uh, compare uh, everybody's opinions and see how they are similar and differ. And uh, today we are uh, reviewing 2006's Casino Royale, the first James Bond film to uh, be featuring Daniel Craig as James Bond, and this is based off of the first novel, actually the first James Bond novel by Ian Fleming. Um, with that being said, we're going to get into uh, the budget, which was $150 million, and it made $600, $106.5 million, you, making it... The, hold on, Stalin, can you repeat that number? $600, $100, and I... I forget. Sorry, sorry <laughs> six, $616.5 million. I'm <laughs> Yeah, it's ninety freaking degrees out. It's okay. You just confused the shit out of me. I had to walk upstairs, <laughs> two sets of stairs, because I had to go outside to put the garbage to the curb after I got done working down two yeah. subs, and I ran up two steps. Two stairs, <sighs> just two. Jeff, just crap, <laughs> God damn it! Two flights of Anyways, stairs. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> vigorously chucks water exhausts himself <laughs> explaining the stuff that makes him drink water God. <laughs> um, yeah 660.5 million dollars uh, making this the highest grossing Bond film without adjusting for inflation up to this time uh, a something that is not going to be broken until Skyfall which is the highest grossing Bond film of all time even adjusting to inflation um now, uh, to go into the background of this, uh, originally, uh, Casino Royale was released as a t made-for-TV movie in 1954, a year after the novel was written. That just shows you how popular, you know, the first Bond novel was, <laughs> that CBS actually went to Ian Fleming and in today's money gave him, like, $10,000 and, like, hey, give us the rights to this so that way we can do this for our tv show and uh i just got your message ted <laughs> um <laughs> scuffed uh <laughs> and um with that where was I? oh yeah and uh with that uh we have casino royale 1954 which is part of cbs's tv series climax from then uh the producer of that uh, episode, ended up getting acquiring the rights to Casino Royale, and uh, he ended up passing away. Someone else ended up buying the rights from his family, pitched it to Columbia Pictures, and they made the Bond film parody Casino Royale, released in 1967. So that one has been forever called 19 I mean, Casino Royale 67, and the climax episode is considered Casino Royale 54. Now. Columbia Pictures later on gets bought by Sony. So Sony now has the rights to Casino Royale. Which is why, you know, there hasn't been a Casino Royale by Eon Films until now, because they never had the rights until now. And they ended up 
able acquiring the rights back in 1999 for Casino Royale to be made uh, by going, hey, MGM has Spider-Man. Want to make a Spider-Man movie? <laughs> and Sony was like, yeah, we want to make a Spider-Man movie. So uh, they did a little trade. So MGM and Eon Films make Casino Royale, and Sony made the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man film. So there's a fun factoid there. Noted. Yeah. I was curious. You said they acquired it in 1999, so it made me wonder what made them wait until 06, but then the uh, trade, I guess, makes sense now. That that checks out. Yeah. Uh, that and also, uh, the script was in development hell. Uh, the making of this film apparently was like a nightmare. Um, they also weren't sure like who James Bond was going to be, but like the two people that they had really considered uh i mean of course you have daniel craig who wanted out but the other person was probably going to be henry cavill okay As a matter of fact they actually said that henry cavill was like the second like uh choice of daniel craig would have said no and the reason why they went with craig over uh henry cavill henry cavill was 22 years old i feel like you also would not have fit i couldn't I picture him as as bond <laughs> Having, admittedly, we'll we'll get into it later, of course, but having watched Daniel Craig, like, I think Henry Cavill would make a very interesting Bond. Not necessarily right. good or bad, <laughs> just interesting. Right. Um, that being said, when they announced that Daniel Craig was Bond, a lot of people were pissed off because it has blue eyes. And, uh, to on, Stelman, quote... Stelman cut out there what he said was because he has blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. Uh, to quote uh my uh college roommate from my freshman year to my junior year uh bond is not a blonde a lot of people were, were saying that and uh no i did not go to college in 2006 this is someone <laughs> that hasn't watched any of these because he was still on the bond's not a blonde i'm not watching the daniel craig ones well then i got him to watch the daniel craig ones and he fucking like daniel craig is bond like everybody else does when they freaking watch it but um <laughs> But anyway, there was literally people mocking Daniel Craig as James Blonde. And it's like, <laughs> so off to a good start for kind of pissing off your audience a little bit. Uh, they Pierce Brosnan uh, was asked to come back, but he wanted too much money. So uh, they basically said, um, well, you were a good James Bond. Like that was the exact quote and <laughs> uh, left it with that. Rip. Um, okay. Yeah. The person that directs this is uh, Martin Campbell, who also directed um, Goldeneye. And uh, I have to say, uh, I, I, guess it, I guess it seems that since this film, uh, in retrospect, is held with high regard and then with Goldeneye. As a matter of fact, Goldeneye is kind of a sacred cow. Uh, I guess that means Martin Campbell's the dude that if you're going to have a new Bond, have him direct it, because uh -oh. apparently... People think both his movies are masterpieces, so... <laughs> Admittedly, if you're going to just pick two movies from the same director, this is up there. It may not be the top spot, but it's up there. It, I, yeah, I'd say the closest... I'd say, like, uh, if, if anything's better than this, it's probably from Russia with Love and uh, uh, Thunderball. I'm not saying that they're better, better movies, per se, than uh, this one, because we haven't went to rankings yet. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> That one-two punch is pretty damn good. Um, that being said, another person that... Uh, this person wasn't considered, but he expressed interest, and that is Quentin Tarantino. Wait, as as Bond or as director? Hold on. Director. Okay. Director. Okay, I got as, lost. As James Bond. I That would have confused the shit out of me. Uh, no, no. At, we talked about Tarantino he, for the last one too, right? Like, he, yeah, yeah. He he yeah. wanted to direct this and set it into the uh, set it in the 1960s, and said he'd only do it if uh, Pierce Brosnan was Bond. I'm glad that this didn't happen. Not that Tarantino is a bad director, but with him wanting to set this in the 1960s and his track record of uh, not having the best subtlety on things and trying to make things a little bit. Uh, I guess accurate to the times we probably would have had the Sean Connery uh, misogyny back if Tarantino directed. Um, yeah, maybe. 
So that, that so <laughs> yeah. So I'm kind of glad that he is not there. Um, so we get Martin Campbell back, and uh, due to uh, the last film being very very CGI heavy, they dialed it the fuck back with this. And thank the maker. That was they a did. that was a conscious decision, much like. It was a conscious decision to, like, you know, not have it be in space for For Your Eyes Only after Moonraker. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that being said, uh, for since we already talked about some people in the cast, uh, obviously Daniel Craig is uh, James Bond. And uh, fun fact with him about being James Bond, every time I see a meme talking about how uh, cute Rachel Vices and how it's like, oh, I had such a huge crush on Evie. I go, she is married to James Bond and way out of your league. <laughs> Have so fantasize all you want. It's not happening. She's married to James Bond. <laughs> you lose. All right. Um, <laughs> that mean, uh, we also have uh, Eva Green as uh, Vesper Lind. Uh, other people that were suggested for the role was uh, Angelina Jolie, who is the daughter of uh, a famous actor that Ted very, very much loves, which is uh, Mr. John Voight. Nope! John Voight and sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs> What's that noise? And, uh, uh, John, John Voight is the worst. He's, he, he literally has no range. He just looks like he's constipated all the fucking time. And his acting says, please let me offset. I have to shit. Like, like that's 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 it. That's John Voight as a human. And uh, Charlie Theron was also strongly considered, but um, Eva Green. Uh, at least I think it's Eva. Could be Ava. I, I don't know. E E V A is Eva. Close enough. Yeah. Uh, French actress Eva Green uh, ended up uh, winning the part, and other people in the role. Uh, I will say that this is uh, one of at least two films. That there is no uh, queue and no money penny. Um, so, th and the reasoning behind that was queue and money penny aren't in the uh, book Casino Royale, and they followed the book. Uh, also, more or less accurately. Ad admittedly, to uh, watching the movie, Stallman let that out to us pretty early that there was no queue, no money penny, and at the time I was disappointed. But having watched the film, I don't think I would have missed them if I hadn't been looking for them. Like, the, the plot played itself yeah. out without the two of them. Right. And then, um... We also have, uh... Mads Mikkelsen as the villain Le Chiffre. Or, Le, no, it's Le Chief. I, 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 I don't speak French, but it's Le Chief. Um... <laughs> yeah. Uh, you might know Mads Mikkelsen in, uh... The TV series Hannibal... Uh, he's also the villain in Doc in the first Doctor Strange movie. Um, he's he's a face you'd recognize for sure. Yes, without being able to necessarily place him to. I know him from this. It's he's he's a very good like villain secondary actor that doesn't necessarily stand out, but you you'd know his face. And the uh, basically who is not so much the Blofeld of the Daniel Craig era, but is kind of close. Uh, Jesper Christensen as Mr. White. Um, this is one of his first English-speaking roles, and actually, due to his roles in the uh, other two James Bond films that he's in, uh, that being Quantum of Solace, the next one, and uh, Spectre, um, he... Uh, ended up taking a lot more uh, English roles since people wanted to see more of them. Um, we also have uh, Giancarlo Gianni, Giannini as uh, Rene Mathis, and uh, Rene Mathis uh, shows up again in Quantum of Solace. And, um, uh, spoiler alert to you all, is rather pissed off at Bond in the uh, next movie, and rightfully so. <laughs> um, and then also we have Jeffrey Wright as Felix Leiter and Jeffrey Wright will play Felix Leiter two more times making him the longest tenured actor as Felix Leiter and the only person to play Felix Leiter back to back and I promise we're going to talk about him later oh yeah 
<laughs> Jeffrey writes a beast. And that goes with casting. So we're going out to likes and dislikes. If you know, you know, the whole uh, plan thing, just depending on what we're going with first, with whether it's likes or dislikes. Actually, just just as a natural transition, I think we should start with likes because I have uh, opinions on casting. If that's cool with yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so f- first I want to talk about Daniel Craig. Um, I visually he doesn't look like the other Bonds. And no, well, no, no. and <laughs> and, God's and uh, well, like while I know that that's a big sticking point for Bond purists, right? Like th- I thought it did really well for this movie for a lot of reasons. The first is that he looks distinguished. He looks chiseled. Like it really, like his physical appearance fits the role beyond just his excellent acting ability, right? Um, yeah, I, it also helps that to prepare for this, he did what Timothy Dalton did and read all the Bond novels. Well, so so there's that like like looking physically different obviously helped the the you know both the the character that he played but also the big thing for me is that like they really made a sticking in this one outside of a few really really minor points which I'll get to later um that this was not a continuation of the franchise this was a reboot of the franchise and yes yes a... this this is this is a reboot i'd say until specter kind of like officially makes it more of a hard reboot this was a little bit of a soft reboot it it, it him looking different very much stuck apart from the same way we've always done things and continuing the same tropes and the same patterns and the same like this it very the him looking physically different really stuck a staple in we're doing this different this time. This isn't the same thing just forward. And I, I really, yeah. really respected that. Um, yeah, I do too. And to me, I think them doing it as a reboot really helped. You know, the fact that this is a Bond origin story. Yeah. So, which, well, you know. I don't think it was really a problem for me that he looks different than the other ones. I, a lot of things do that where they completely change what they look like. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I don't think it really was a big issue for me. No, I, I, I mean, having having gone through so many bonds to this point, like it didn't it wasn't going to bother me one way or another. But I think it is a plus to the fact that, like, this is a different series in the same franchise than it would have been to just make him look like every other bond ever. I, I I think it was a really big sticking point, a really big positive that he looked different because of the way that they I don't market it is probably the wrong word here, but like the, the way that they sold <laughs> where this movie was supposed to fit into the franchise kind of transitioning naturally. Um, I, I thought every actor played really, really, really well. Sans one. Um, I, they're every, everybody really hit their role. Everybody really did a really good job. They fit their characters. There was strong development. Everybody had a strong personality. You know, where everybody sat like this, the, the characters in this movie were so so strong and to move forward from that not to short sell that point but um we we, i said i was going to come back to felix later and i'm going to make it happen early Um, (laughs) so uh i hated okay he got introduced in probably like this okay not introduced you you beca- you came to recognize that he was felix later in this scene that lasted less than 25 seconds on a set of stairs right First off, as a person who loves cinematography, I love scenes on stairs, and I'll explain that later as we get to more likes. <laughs> but the way that they introduced Felix Leiter was, hey, don't do that. Also, I'm here to help you. Please reconsider. Actually, I'm Felix Leiter. Lick my nuts. And then he assisted Bond again. <laughs> it was it was the perfect writing in for somebody who's supposed to be an assistant. When you already knew the character, the writing in of Felix Leiter and then making you realize he's Felix Leiter, this was, it was so brilliant. I said it as we were watching. I was like, I was pissed for three and a half seconds. And then I was like, actually, no, that was really fucking good. <laughs> R- writing in Felix Leiter was probably the best four seconds of, of movie I have watched in this 21 movie stretch. This It was absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. So to actually, so to actually beat the scene in "You Only Live Twice," where I love you, <laughs> I, I genuinely like the the writing to make it happen in that fashion at that tempo, and then make you mad for being mad two seconds sooner. It was brilliant. I genuinely think this is the if you had to cut 
every four second snippet from all 21 movies so far. I think this was the best four second snippet. I, I, I felt really good. It was, it was brilliant writing to bring him in the way that they did. Yeah, I agree. I think Jeffrey Wright killed it. Uh, Haley, any? I do think that, like, at first, it seemed like they just kind of forced it in there for a second, but I, I do like how they did it. It was... It almost seemed very smooth on how they did it, but, like, you kind of got the picture very quickly, and... Right. I enjoyed it. Uh, now, yeah, I, I mean, he's, know... he's in the book, too, and it's more or less like this. Like, he's just like, hey, like, I'll spot you the money. Don't kill him you're gonna fuck it up for the rest of us and, and genuinely i think like for the first time the first time in all 21 movies the writing made me feel something like i've had i've had moments of rage because of how they wrote it don't get me wrong but i don't think it was the writing directly that caused me that rage it was that the writing was so lazy right like i i right. genuinely think this was the first time that writing gave me an emotion directly I, it took me a second to get there, but it, it it made me pretty fucking happy. This was really good. Uh, you guys have any other opinions on on casting or on acting or uh, before we get into other likes? No. Um, Stun silence. I I'm glad that they brought back Judy Dench and gave her a little bit of a larger role, and she does a little bit of a, like before. I love how like it's kind of switched. With, like, M and Bod, because, like, before M's just, like, the newbie going, like, yeah, you're a relic of the Cold War, and this one, she's like, I miss the Cold War! Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I, I do like her as M a lot more than I have liked anyone else. I feel like she's a, a lot better. Yeah. And their relationship in this one, I I thoroughly enjoyed. I, I, I have to agree to an extent. I, I like Judy Dench playing M as a character. I like the way that they develop her character and write her character. Um, the only part about Judy Dench being M in this movie that bothers me is that almost everyone else in this film got recycled from the last one. Like, Stallman mentioned this being a soft reboot, and the thing that made it feel soft rather than a full reboot is... Well, some of these actors carried over, and Judy Dench being the main one that you recognized. Like, I think like, Judy is Dench really? is the only one that was okay. Even if that's, a, I thought I recognized a couple of people, but re regardless, like, I like the idea that like, hey, we're rebooting this. We're starting from scratch. We're giving Bond a fresh slate. This is a new series rather than a continuation on the old one. But M gets to say the same. I I feel like added a weird continuity non-continuity to it and that's that's my only deficit judy dench played this role brilliantly i thought she she, <laughs> she acted fantastically i love her character like please don't get me wrong this isn't a huge deficit like just the only detraction i have from that is is it's weird to keep her when they cut everyone else right, right. um not to take over um if somebody else wants to take over likes and then i'll get into the rest of my list uh I was Genuinely... gonna wait. What? Go ahead. Ailey. Oh, I was gonna <laughs> say no. You can go. <laughs> I'm so confused. Who's speaking right now? Haley, go ahead. Okay, I honestly I think <laughs> this movie overall has just the way it played out. There were certain things in it that it were a little stupid, in my opinion. But I think this one has probably been one I've liked the most. I just Daniel Craig kind of sells it for me as compared to previous bonds who we're not going to talk about <laughs> her favorite sean <laughs> oh, <fuck> off, <laughs> i believe right now i i have to agree though uh, and it, even the things that like i, I know haley has been had an issue obviously with the sexism and the chauvinism and i think the difference between all the other bond characters in this one is that like it was less less chauvinist less of a pig even the i, I don't even I, sexual aggression even still feels too strong mm -hmm. but it was like let me show my interest without forcing myself right like it yeah. it, it it definitely detracted from that aggressive it it, it definitely come it definitely comes from like the uh vibe of how bond is and like uh the Dalton era, even though he is a little bit forceful in the, you know, even though Dalton's bond is a little bit forceful in that, uh, Lazenby's bond is to an extent, and, uh, 
Pierce Brosnan and Tomorrow Never Dies. You know, it's not really forced. It's just, you know. So I, I guess the difference is that, like, in in all of the other Bonds, like, Bond has felt pushy. And in yes. this one, and in this one, he felt flirtatious and like yes. not, like not ready for like a, no. a developing thing than just yeah. instant. Yes, absolutely. Uh, which which I think definitely like made him feel less like a scumbag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I I agree. I agree. I think that uh, uh, I think this really helps with like the writing, um. Uh, as in with, like, the development between him and, like, uh, the women that he is with in this movie. Yeah, that... he didn't sleep with her right off the bat. <laughs> I'm proud. And she didn't oh, pull a knife and an apple out of her ass, or a pear, excuse me. <laughs> I think it was a guava fruit. But... Whatever the fuck it was, she ripped it out of her ass crack, okay? Uh, it doesn't fucking matter. Get a little dragon fruit. Literally nothing matters here. It's since she pulled uh, it out of her asshole. Uh, for... I guess specifically for casting, I think Mads Mikkelsen did a hell of a job, despite Absolutely. some of the weird, some of the weird quirks of his character. Like it's like, I still find it funny that uh, him just go like he's like, t like he cries blood out of his one eye, and he's, he's just like his own blood, yeah, yeah, hell, and he's just like, yeah, it's nothing sinister. Even right. though it's like the most sinister thing, but then he's also like puffing on a uh, uh, an inhaler. inhaler. The, the whole... inhaler ruins it all. I I was gonna save this for dislikes, but Jesus Christ, why do you have to write that in? Genuinely, <laughs> how can you make a human look less intimidating? There, there's two <laughs> things. Okay, it's crutches, it's cr it's cr crutches and an inhaler, and they're just like, hey, the inhaler added next to nothing other than a tracking device into his thing. They could have shoved it in his shoe. He didn't need an inhaler. Why'd you have to make him look so weak and dumb and fragile and absolutely worth it? It was, oh, God, that made me so mad. Well, the inhaler I will say this, added nothing. Despite this dude having, like, three disabilities, <laughs> he's at least able to be somewhat menacing throughout the movie it's at different it, parts no, until it's, like, ruined. They Look, look, menacing... I would uh, menacing would be his primary character trait if not for the inhaler. Right. Okay. They ruined all of the menacing by going, I mean, I'm angry. I'm going to kill you and your family. <sighs> like it just, it just, the whole thing was gone, man. It was so, oh God, it made me so angry. I, but there was that, but, no but benefit. With, but without the inhaler, you know, if you're, if you're going to talk about the tracking device, they could have stuck it in his fucking shoe. I don't, th don't do this to me, Stallman. I think he was more so saying without the inhaler, he would have been more intimidating. Yes. yes. No, that's it. Make him intimidating. Make him a villain that I genuinely despise. Not go, man, I hate him. Ah, he puffed an inhaler. I kind of feel bad for him. And then I move on with my... It's... Oh, but God. At same, but at the same time, like, he's a villain you kind of feel bad for. Because, like, he's just like, all right, I just uh, I, bet all this money on the stock market. I'm hmm. going to make all these guys a lot of money. I'm... And then my plan doesn't work and I lost all their fucking nope, money. I'm, all right, I'm, who wants to play poker? I'm saving that. You don't want me to get into that now. I'm going to yell about it later. We're going to move. Right. We're going to move from that. I'm, I'm going to talk about cinematography because I would be remiss to not speak about it in this movie. Uh, I was also going to say Ava Green, I thought, did a great job uh, yeah, in this movie, too. Absolutely. Yeah, not to cut you off. Yeah, she she did a very fantastic job and she she better than any actor or actress I've seen through the whole series fully developed a character not that there yes. hasn't been character development not that there haven't been people who are good at it but she did the best at developing developing from a to b and being consistently good the whole time she was fantastic right and also yeah also looking back with like a uh, spoiler uh vesper's a double agent to see her actually you know like that scene where she's crying when she finds out like her her name's the password and that bond has fully fell for her you figure it's like, oh, it's tears of joy, but no, it's like, no, it's tears of regret. Like, she's, like, sobbing that she played this man's heart. And we can go with, like, the motivations. I have a feeling those are going to be a little bit in dislikes a for little you. Bit. A little bit. But, uh, which I can counter that. I can, That's probably the only one I can counter. Yep, I'll, um, I'll, I'll wait for that one. So, yeah. That one. But, but, yeah, uh, cinematography, amazing. Absolutely. Um... So my first point is that the score was fantastic. Uh, I know Stallman was upset as we watched the movie that the Bond theme didn't appear until the end, which... Oh, no, 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 I like that. Okay. I thought that was amazing. Okay. I thought that, that was brilliant because it really solidified, like, yeah, 
this is his orange story, and now he's James Bond. Well, this my- is a James Bond movie. There you go. <laughs> no, I, I, I thought that like, so okay. Some movies have done a really good score, but they give you license to music that makes it feel like we're selling it, right? right? There's some movies that just give you no score, no sound. We've had a whole, whole host of different issues with why the score hasn't been perfect through 21 movies to this point. This one gave you ambiguous music. It set the mood. It was, it was fitting for the time that you genuinely didn't notice it, which is exactly what you want from, from a music score. Yeah. And they gave you the really big, bold, impactful moments when it mattered. Score flawless. And with the I, flawless to really talk about cinematography and the score, I think that's what really sells the gun barrel in this movie because that's my one of my favorite parts about this is how the gun barrel is. It's like they actually show like the dude actually pointing the gun at James Bond, and it gives the perspective of the gun barrel. And then as soon as Bond like you know. Do, you know, does the gun barrel and shoots the dude, the blood comes down. Then you hear the theme song, ba 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 and it's like, yep, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I, I... It really gets you kind of amped. Throw away while we're on the music, Chris Cornell should have done every single, like, intro from here to the end of it. Chris Cornell was brilliant, we're gonna move on, I'm not I gonna mean, stick I w- on I that. mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I liked Aha's and Duran Duran's Th- themes. From but... here on out, Chris Cornell should have oh, done from all here, of them. Oh, from here on out, oh yeah, from here Perfect. on out. Chef's kiss, brilliant. Moving on. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll say this, I'm not, I mean, uh... uh... Quantum of Solace is Alicia Keys and Jack White. I will so not place bad. my judgment then, but if they're not Chris Cornell's standard, I'm fighting them all. Anyway, <laughs> um, with cinematography again, uh, camera work, phenomenal. I mentioned the scene on the stairs. Um, it, like, it, the way that they position the cameras to add suspense, to add drama, to make you feel like you can see enough, but not everything, where you're constantly on the edge of your seat waiting for more. Fantastic. The the place that this was most notable was towards the end as Bond is chasing, uh, what's her name through the, the Vesper. Vesper. Thank you. I just wanted to call her Eva Green and that really, <laughs> it was going to bother me if I did one actor and one character. But uh, anyway, as Bond is chasing Vesper through the, through the streets and like bouncing on pillars and avoiding gunmen and like they put the camera in the perfect place every single time where you could see bond or you could see the guy with the gun or, or you could see the courtyard and you couldn't see everything. And they added suspense to the whole scene. When you knew how it was going to work out, it still added suspense. It was the camera work was flawless. Absolutely flawless. Um, the, the other part, uh, with the cinematography was the makeup artist. Uh, I, I, I don't know that I've made a point of this through any one of the movies so far, um, but there wasn't a single point in time where any of the actors had gone through an action scene that looked like there was follow up to it. Uh, Bond and and actually several of the villains had lacerations on their face like blood or scars or I, even the guy bleeding from his fucking eyes. It looked flawless the whole time. The makeup artists did a really good job at making sure that the consistencies of the character were based on the timeline, the things that they had already presented and the things that still needed to happen the way that the character should look absolutely brilliant. I, I cinematography was through the roof on this one. Yeah. I think the only other movie that really does this is license to kill. And, uh, what I mean by that, as in, like, like, Bond's, like, injuries that you can still see throughout the entire movie, or, uh, like, different injuries, like, throughout, like, the action scenes, it's not like, okay, this action scene's done, and Bond just looks, like, you know, unscathed, or, like, the other person that's in the action scene looks unscathed, like, right afterwards, like, it's, you know, obviously, like, they kind of progress and look worse, and I'm glad that this is kind of the same, because, like, uh, Earlier on, like Bond gets attacked, and then you see him later. Like he still had, like you said, he still has the scars mm-hmm. from like the previous attack, from like previous events. Like it, you know, it's just like adds more, one more scar, another scar, and another scar. I mean, throughout the in, pretty much the majority of the movie, he had a bandage on his, like I think it was his stomach or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. and anytime it showed him, he had that. So like. I, that is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to movies is when five seconds later, everyone's perfectly fine and <laughs> right. nobody's injured. So I think they, they did do really well with that, especially 
the, the, even with that small little detail the the facial like the facial injuries were the one thing that got me because it's I mean, like that's the thing that you notice more than anything else but mm -hmm. like after an action scene the next scene like hey they're healed from where you saw him last but there's still some red marks still some blood still some cuts like they they the consistency from a to b in this movie was really really good and i give a lot of credit to the makeup artists um i think most of the last that i have here for likes um was that i'm i just had the note and now i'm losing it um there it is the title sequence the title sequence uh <laughs> the okay ignore it really, it. It re they they really sold it as like yeah daniel craig's our james bond if you don't like the fact that he's blonde and blue-eyed deal with it Th well That's there was what I get from there it. was that but it was also animated in a way that like th the last couple it wasn't, the last it couple wasn't of just movies, silhouettes of naked women there right. was actually like the last, action the last couple of movies felt unique and they weren't just naked women and you know a ballad of a song like right, ignoring cause... chris cornell for this particular point like they they did a really good job of creating an animation that was like interesting eye-catching relevant without no, just hey here's titties like it 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 i think i thought the the title sequence did a really good job and i thought it was notable that i had an opinion about it when i just genuinely haven't given a shit about most of the title sequences through these movies because they've all been the exact same <laughs> <laughs> uh Haley, what else you got for likes is there anything else in your list uh not really i mean i think everything was pretty much covered with the likes Overall, I just I really like this movie. So that that have many issues. I, I have I haven't heard her say that since I think like at all at all at all yeah <laughs> yeah at yes. all. Stomin, what else is on your list, bud? Um, the big one that I have on my list that I really really like is uh I'd say the writing, and the reason why I really like the writing on this is that it tricked Ted. I, and, mm, I don't say it yes. tricked me. It misled me. I'm gonna. I, it's I, minor I, difference. Oh, oh. I'm not oh, saying so the, e the ego is coming I, out. All right. I'm not saying I was right because I'm admitting I was wrong. But I <laughs> expected a different thing than what happened. But the best. I, I'll thing, give it to you. But the best thing is, is that when he was like, "All right, so Bond thinks Mathis is the uh, traitor out of the entire thing," and. uh Ted's just like, all right, that checks out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the movie still continues. He's like, why is the movie still continuing? He's just like, oh, she's going to die. So it's going to be like the thing. And he's going to want to have revenge. Well, that's predictable. That's so predictable. And it finds out that it ends up being Vesper. That's the trade. He goes, for I should have known. For okay, I, I should have known. I kind of had a feeling about halfway through the movie, but I didn't say anything because I was like, no. I'm for, not gonna do that. for what it's worth, most of the things that I said in that sentence weren't wrong by themselves. No, it was combining by them. Themselves. By combining them, I made myself very, very well, I'm wrong. I'm glad. I'm glad that the movie misled you because uh, yeah. they do show, they do show you the carrots to go like, yep. oh yeah, it's her. It's yep. totally her. Once, once, but they give you that reasonable doubt, and the red herring freaking got yep. dead. Yeah, no. Once, once, once it, it got, got revealed, dead, line singer. Once it got revealed how that was gonna happen, I was like, "Fuck!" They gave me all of the tools, and I recognized it. Like I didn't have to go back and catch myself. It, like I, I'm sitting here acknowledging that I was wrong. However, the sentence that I said when I was like, "Man, this is about to be predictable," most of the things in that sentence weren't wrong, just by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> right and then it happened because he's just like and he's just like yeah she dies right she dies right i'm like i'm not saying anything you didn't, you didn't deny it though so you the, did answer the silence yeah. told me i was right and that made me more mad but he was but silence yeah, was I'm, like, to... I'm like there's more to it he goes there's more to it and his... they start thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and i'm like his silence is bragging that i was wrong that's <laughs> i learned later that that's how that worked out yep yep and yes, this I did have flashbacks with OHMSS with like Bond going like uh telling Vesper I love you and then Haley's just like, yeah, until the next movie. 
<laughs> and I'm just like, oh god, here we go again. Here we go. Again. Listen, while I while I appreciate the fact that he is a lot better than the previous ones, I'm not stupid. Yeah. <laughs> they still gotta hit. A, they still gotta hit a form. Still yeah. It's, a, it's still his character. I, <laughs> I'm not stupid. Uh, but uh, that's uh, a lot that I have with likes. Um. I also, uh, despite the ending, despite the movie kind of dragging a little bit, I do like the ending of the movie where, uh, he does, you know, run into Mr. White. He goes, we need to talk, shoots him from like a long distance and like goes up to him and then does the uh, line of, you know, it's like, it's like the name's James Bond, Bond, James Bond, as in, it's like, granted, it's like, a, it's like the old trope, but it's like done in kind of like a new way as in like. He's went through the origin to finally be the James mm-hmm. Bond that you know, and then you hear the uh, James Bond thing. I think that was just well put together. Yeah, as we're transitioning to dislikes, though, I I do want to talk about the movie dragging. Um, yeah, because it's it's a weird dislike. It's not a very strong, yeah. passionate. So yeah, see, I I have a weird thing with it as well. The first like hour and forty minutes, the movie could have been done. And that would have been it, right? And and it would have felt like a natural stopping point and everything would have been okay. Um, the reason that it felt like it dragged was because after that point where the it felt like the movie was going to come to a natural end, there was another half hour and there were two completely separate plot lines that happened post-movie that felt like they didn't need to be there. Um, mm-hmm. So after the villain dies, gets the girl, recovers, beats the traitor, as it feels, okay? Uh, the, the movie could have been over, and it would have felt like a very natural stopping point. It would have been a very good movie, and to be quite frank, I think I would have ranked it higher had that been the ending of the movie, right? I, right, I, and that's not how the book ends, though. <laughs> right, well, so so the first twist, then, is, like, her, like the, the, the person that you thought, him getting the girl, the girl becomes the traitor, right? Like, and, and, yeah. and yeah. like... It it was a valuable storyline. I thought it was good, and I thought that twenty minute stretch by itself was brilliant writing, right? But it being an addendum to the end of the already hour and forty minutes that you'd already seen felt yeah. extraneous. And then that line ends, and you're like, okay, he's pissed, he's frustrated, but still saved the day, and everything's okay. Like, okay, plot could have also ended there, but then. They have. He has to go for revenge against the dude that kills the girl, steals the money, and it's just right. They could. They could have saved. They definitely could have saved that for like the next movie. But genuinely, I thought they could have saved both parts for the next movie, just as a plot line to how he feels emotionally. Into again, not right. Having watched the next movie at this point, like the the ability to influx that into the beginning shorten them both down, really create a reason for the emotion of the character to do the things that he's doing, like, it is a really strong starting point to open a movie, and they're just like, "Ah, but what if we have 40 minutes to the end? I I will tell you, the next movie does pick up right after, uh, uh, Bud, like, you know, shoots, like, uh, uh, Mr. White, because it it takes place of a car chase afterwards. Again, I I don't mean to detract from the writing because I thought each individual piece was really good, but I thought it made the movie stretch to add all three of those pieces right. in the same film. Like to put them at the end just sucked. To me, to me, I also kind of thought like at the beginning, if they would have just con- condensed it to what the book was, I think uh, the time it wouldn't have dragged as much. But I get why they added all the stuff at the end to show you like how the chief lost the money. Because, um, uh, to quote another, uh, guest that we've had on the show, Mike Riot from the Moonraker episode, uh, he considers this movie kind of boring, and, uh, that being said, it reminded me of, like, License to Kill, where, because this movie, like, License to Kill and a couple other Bond films is very character motivated, Mm -hmm. like, it relies on the characters, as opposed to like over the top action, and one of Ted's complaints was was that with License to Kill there wasn't really a lot of action in it, and when the action scene did happen at the end, it felt you know extraneous, kind of anti yeah yeah extraneous and anticlimactic. 
So to me, I felt like maybe they felt like they had to have all that at the beginning. Uh, which honestly would have cut like probably about like a half hour, half hour out of this movie. I, um, see, see, I don't know. Like, I, I get what you're saying, and it's hard for me to just straight up disagree with you. But I feel like the action that we did see helped you give a feel for the character that you got, which made the rest of the movie better. Like, I, like okay. had you cut the beginning, I don't know that you would have liked Daniel Craig's Bond as much as you did, because you didn't have a feel for who he was as a person, what he was interested in, what his motives okay. were. Or, I, I, and I, I genuinely, the action at the beginning, while it didn't necessarily contribute to the plot, it definitely gave you a feel for the character, which created character. such a strong base yeah. for the movie. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. Like, I, I'm not saying, like, this isn't really, like, a dislike to me. This is just kind of, like... uh trying to think of like you know because to me it's like i think like a uh, like the uh with me reading the book i think you know revealing vesper being the traitor and actually having her you know having that whole entire thing with you know him like you know confronting her by the way in the book it's different he just finds her dead with a suicide note nifty so i'm gonna get into that later too uh <laughs> um and I can actually, I can actually, uh, yeah, I can't wait to debate you on that fucking that's, shit. That's okay. I'm, um, I'm here to learn for that part. That's fine. All right. All right. Um, cause I have a feeling that it might, cause we also kind of like bullshitted throughout this thing. And unfortunately, this is kind of a detriment to this movie. If you miss a something, just a little thing, it could, uh, send like some big plot points over your fucking head. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's kind of an issue that if you just miss like a little line of like dialogue that you're just like and we were kind of we lost yeah <laughs> several times <laughs> so yeah because there's because otherwise you were you'd be like who the fuck is this dude mr white it's like he's been in the movie like three other times kind of in the background yeah. and shit but if you missed it you'd be like this random dude here all right like who the yeah. hell is he and nine times out of ten, if there are people in the background, I'm not going to notice in any movie, so I don't pay that much attention. Right. Oh, and, uh... Uh, that's basically all I really have for negatives, to be honest. Like, there's not a lot. I will say that I think the CG for the, uh, building collapsing at the end, uh... Better than Die Another Day by a long shot, but it has dated a little bit. Not perfect, but serviceable. I I, I wouldn't even call it a detraction, but yeah, I, I'm with you. Uh, Haley, I'll let you get into dislikes next, because I know Stallman and I are going to debate the shit I have to say. Okay. Well, I think my biggest issue with this movie... I didn't mind the ending. I didn't think it was terrible. I didn't care for it. Okay. Solely because, like... They still fucked comment, on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> the boats are unnecessary i fucking hate boats because of this movie and we're gonna move on from that um <laughs> i think that the whole the whole thing with her i think her death scene really just frustrated me i i, di I didn't care for it much because the way it played out just seemed really dumb yeah i i do think that was kind of like executed a little poorly i mean she I mean, obviously, you know, she's trying to inhale the water and kill herself. And there is a reasoning behind that, which I will get into when I get into it with Ted. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think, like, there are parts of it that's kind of wonky. So I agree. Oh, yeah, the fact of her locking herself in there and then... For one, they were both underwater for way too fucking long. And I don't think that anyone, unless you are professionally trained to be underwater for that long... I'll could hold their there. breath like I'll that. I'll get there, I promise. But it's just, like, she dies, and then he manages to get the door open and pull her out of the water. It just, uh, it seemed like it dragged on a lot, and it was just very stupid to and, me. And my big detraction from that scene, too, was that, like, after she turned on him, after she created the strife that extended this movie, he's still putting in so much effort to save her, and I can almost understand that as a character development point. But then he gets on the phone with them. He's like, the bitch is dead. Like, he's just already over it. And and I, mm -hmm. I feel like that takes away from everything that you saw where he put in so much effort. Like, um, 
Well, uh, it's a little bit better, I guess, explained or implied in the book. It's just how Bond deals with grief. He just tries to like act like it, like it was kind of like uh, no big deal. So basically, just treating her like she was nothing, just basically, is a way for him to like not have to think about a woman that he loves, like betrayed him, and now she's dead. I know you can't see me fucking punching myself in the hand, so I don't have to talk. As a counselor, it's so very fucking wrong, but um, I, I understand the point as, in terms of making the film, writing the book, whatever the case may be, so I can move on from that one. Whew. All right. Um, <laughs> to, to transition, then... Oh, I'm not saying it's a healthy coping mechanism. Mm. It's not. Mm, no, 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 no. Okay. Um, Come on. <laughs> Haley mentioned the holding your breath underwater, and it leads me to my first detraction that I hope Stallman has the gall to fucking answer. Okay? Uh, my my One of my biggest, like, deficits from this movie is that we saw Bond become less of a less of a spy, less of an I'm really good at action and handling crises, and more of a superhuman superhero, just doing things that normal people don't. That right? that's a, that's a criticism I actually have with the Craig era. I don't really care for like the superhero shit. I I don't mind it necessarily that strongly. However, I think, especially towards the beginning of the movie, more so than the end. I mean, obviously, right. it, it continues the whole way through, but I think that there are a lot of points where it's like, okay, normal people can't do that. Um, right. N like, we, we've we seen Bond as a sharpshooter, and I've complained then that it's like, ah, that's an ability he didn't have before, didn't have after, right? I've complained right. that, like hey, maybe this is stronger than he should be. Maybe this is not a realistic fight for him to have with Henchman X, right? But, like, right. this movie, it was a pretty consistent thread the whole way through that it's just, like, no one should have all of these superhuman abilities. And I felt like it made him more hero than, like, action star. And yeah. I, I feel like that really, with that really dragged something out of me. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. It, it take, especially how grounded and realistic for the most part this movie is. It does kind of take you out of the realism, you know. Yeah, you're, to you're, like suspend your. It's hard to suspend your disbelief on it, on uh, things with it, him being, even though he's not invincible, he's pretty damn close to being it, invincible. It's it's more like watching a Superman movie than it is like watching Die Hard, right? Like where it's yes. Not, is he going to get out of this? It's, how is he going to get out of this? In, yeah. Instead of, this is a struggle because you don't know what's going to happen. There's the chance he dies, right? Like, the, like it's, right. It, this was very superhuman in that, in that nature. To move from there, one of the big deficits that I have from this movie was the, the strong shift in genre. I recognize that this movie was supposed to be a reboot and not a continuation. This movie made me realize that all of the other movies that we've watched have been more like dramatic action where this one was just a straight up action film. This, this one fits in a threshold with, with die hard with, with like superhero movies with like, this was straight up punch them, beat them up, do fucking fist fight the villain. Everyone dies, but me, fuck you action all over the place. Um, and I, I don't think it was necessarily bad for this movie because I, I do think this was a really, really well done movie, but it's very strange to see the genre switch from the last set of movies to this one in a totally different genre rather than just trying to redo it, but better. I mean, I get that with like the action scenes themselves, but I think there's a like when it comes to like the card game where the good majority of the film mm. is based on the card game it is more so back to like the action drama i'm so happy you mentioned the card game <laughs> because oh you don't like the card game i okay if we're taking this movie in chunks i thought the card game was very good however okay. however <laughs> The way that the movie built up, the way that the movie described the plot line, they gave you all of the issues, they gave you the struggles, they gave you the international conflict, and they're just like, 
But what if you played a poker game to resolve it? <laughs> there's no chance. There's no chance that MI6, the CIA, the, the and fucking any international team would just be like, yeah, let's play him. Let's let him gamble for his fucking money. They'd have, they'd have fucking smashed in the windows feet first, like Rainbow Six Siege and blasted his fucking brains out. And it really sucks that all the buildup they did for this fucking movie ends in, uh, I got a straight flush. Like, j just the major plot lines of this movie slowed down to dealer's um, choice, buddy. Really, really sucks. I, again. I mean, it might have been better if, like, they stuck it with Baccarat, but no one knows how to fucking play Baccarat no, anymore, so. I, I don't think it's better. I really don't. Like, I, I don't I don't think there's a way to take all of that action, all of that buildup, all of the, the, they did so much to build that climax. That I will. I I could. You could argue with me that that I believe that there are three climaxes in this movie, right? With the three separate, well, yeah, like yeah, yeah. They the, if you look at just that first climax, right, which ends with the card game, right? Yes. They tried to murder him in a card game. They tried to poison his drink and put him under cardiac arrest, and they're like, straight flush is better than cardiac arrest. It's just, <laughs> it's the most lackluster climax. Ever. They did so much buildup, so much action, international tension, and so many characters so mad at each other. There's internal strife between M and Bond, and then they're just like, but get a straight flush and everything's okay again. It's that's the most dog shit way to solve everything they used to set it up. Again, card game, great scene. I'm not even. I, I, I thought it was r it, genuinely a masterpiece to watch the card game from start to finish if I didn't have everything to build yeah, it up. It, it, it is very fucking... It, it is, like, the whole card game is, like, analyzed to death by, like, film film buffs for whatever reason. Mm. But, like... Uh, it, it is something that, honestly, probably does transition better in a novel than it does in to film. <sighs> I, I can agree with that it, it, because like in a book you're you're reading it like no matter how much action filled it is like it's still at the pace you're reading it right you're also hearing yeah. like bonds like thoughts and everything so like he's actually like analyzing each person on the table so granted it's baccarat so i don't know what the f fuck is he analyzing but <laughs> if it was poker i would i i like I, we mentioned it as we were watching that like stallman and i have both watched just sat down and fucking watched poker games on espn right like uh, there's nothing uninteresting about poker it's it's still got its own level of suspense and drama and whatever else but for the build-up that they used to get to a poker game what the fuck man <laughs> Yeah, they don't have the thing to build up to the game. It's just the game is the book and the stuff that happens afterwards. <laughs> <sighs> Which probably would have been better. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I yeah. Go ahead. I don't think the card game was necessarily bad. I, I do think, kind of agree with, it's very anticlimactic almost to just kind of go from what they were doing to poker. All right. I... I don't really know much about poker, so I I was not invested <laughs> I mean, in it. I will say this: at least it wasn't a royal flush. Yeah, because that yeah. would have been cliche as fuck. Absolutely. Um, I I know we, you brought up a couple other points that you wanted to argue with me on Stallman, so I I will ignore those so you can get to make your points and tell me I'm wrong. The last thing I'm going to say is that there were some very minor inconsistencies in this film, which okay. comparatively to other Bond films would not have bothered me. The reason that they bothered me for this film is because there were so many places that there was so much attention to detail that the places so, that the places that so, they so, missed it really stood out. Oh, so this is like the living daylights. Uh, <laughs> okay, sort of. Um, <laughs> sort of. Uh, there's one towards the end of the movie. We're in plotline number yeah. two out of three. Um, yeah. I, I said it out loud. He's out of bullets. I, I, <laughs> Shit. Hold on. Nope. God damn it. I uh, Got him again. Stallman, uh, you're wrong. I know you're going to tell me it's a plus one, and no, it is fucking not. We're, we're going to move on. Anyway. Well, no, no, no. I, I know, I'm not sure if it's a Walther P. I know it's not a Walther PPK, so I'm trying to fucking remember what type of fucking gun he has. Uh, whether I was right, whether I was wrong by one bullet, my point is going to continue here. 
to say I know, that because the, automa the automatic weapon immediately weapons. after I said he's out of bullets and then he fired one more. You did see him reload, which I respect. All credit where it's due. Then they took an MP5 with a regular size magazine and fired 848 fucking bullets in a row. Okay, like, like the the places that like they put so much care and detail into this movie, and and I'm not here to detract from it, but it made the inconsistencies, the places where they did lapse in care, stand out so much stronger. Uh, that I, there were a couple of plot holes too. That that I I wrote this line even before that bullet scene, so I I can't remember my specific example that made me put this on paper. But I, I do know that there were several places that, like, I just saw, like, hey, that doesn't quite line up to what should be happening. And, and the the inconsistencies stood out because of how much care and concern they put into so many other places in this movie. The, the difference between the two was stronger than I think I've seen in any movie, and that's why they stood out so bad. Stallman's researching. He wants to tell me I'm wrong I, for counting bullets. I see that. I guess the capacity for a Walter P99 is 15. Well, then he wasn't even close to fucking out and then they're still wrong because after that <laughs> last shot that I didn't say, that I said shouldn't have been there, he clicked after that one. So uh, still... and no, it says 15, there was another one that was 12. Yeah, okay. That's after four, four, after eight. 15. After eight, I said, he's out. He fired a ninth and then instantaneously clicked. If I'm not mistaken. It did happen, yeah. If I'm not so. mistaken, the gun he's been using for several films has been a seven plus one where he can chamber one. And yeah, while we yeah. Quite... yeah it, uh, it, it was a Walther PPK until I think either Tomorrow Never Dies or World is Not Enough. And it it's a Walther P99. And, and then he goes back to the Walther PPK and... uh. uh uh, Quantum of Solace, which is the uh, Bond film after this, although we are not watching that. We are watching the uh, Other Casino Royals. Yeah. Anyway, either way, <laughs> I, I can even forgive the fact that if it is it's if it is the 7 plus 1, you didn't see him chamber 1, right? Which, okay, right. so be it. Like, you did watch him reload right before you counted the 8 shots that he did fire, right? Right. Like, but he fired the ninth shot. Well, it was it, it was the ninth that bothered me. If even if whether it's twelve or whether it's fifteen, it was nine click. Like where you heard it be yeah. empty immediately after. So whether it's twelve or whether it's eight, it's wrong. And I appreciate the fact that they considered reloading into this film because a whole lot of films, past, present, future, definitely do not. Like, one way or another, they're wrong. And that inconsistency bothers me. Even after that inconsistency bothers me, then they take an MP5 and fire 848 rounds. Like, it, it's, it's just... Just make it be consistent. Just give a shit about it if you're gonna <laughs> give a shit about it. All right. Uh, Stallman, your your dislikes will rank, and then we'll get the hell out of here. Um, I mean, I already kind of gave my dislikes. Uh, or anything you wanted to argue me on. Like, oh, I, I do want to argue because I know that you're complaining. Uh, you kind of complained about like a uh, Vesper leaving uh clues on to like where she can be found, and then also the dude that's. Okay. To leading, you know, the number leading to Mr. White, you're like, oh, yeah, so she's the bad guy, but she's not really the bad guy, so, you know, she's just leaving it there, and it's like, it's kind of stupid, it's just all because she falls in love with Bond, she switches sides, but, like, I think it kind of defeats the point is that she's being forced into being a double agent, like, that organization has her boyfriend captured, nope. and are going to kill him. Nope, 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 okay, hold on. So, the reasons that I, I'm, I'm going to explain that scene a little bit further just to make sure that it's clear for audience, right? So y you learn that she's a double agent, but she leaves her phone in the room. Bond sees the phone. There's a text message about who her captor is and leaves a location to make sure that Bond can go find her, right? Well, right? to go find that because she knows she's going to die. My issue with while watching the movie was I'm a bad guy. I've I've been a double agent, but here's all the tools for you to continue being a good guy, right? And admittedly, that was my complaint during the movie. However, in the moment, right, she has the money. She has the dude who's very clearly proven he can protect her. 
And they have a free ticket out because he still has a line to MI6 to get them out of where they are. Okay. There's uh, there's no reason that she has to continue on the action to betray him. And if she does follow through on the action to betray him, which, again, money motivates all I completely fucking understand, um, well, then she, there's no reason for her to leave him the tools to do the right thing. She's giving him the money up to... Ex to uh... Make sure that, okay, the deal was she gives them the money, they're not going to kill James. And she ends up killing herself because she feels that the organization's not going to stop looking for James. Uh, and, and this is also in the book. Like, she kills herself because she thinks that, uh, in the book, the villains are the Russians. She thinks that the Russians aren't going to, like, leave her and James have a happy life because at this point she's kind of assumed that uh, the USSR killed her boyfriend already, but um... I thought he was already dead. Yeah. No, he actually shows up in Quantum of Solace. Uh, I... Uh, Look, I, I get that her boyfriend probably plays a factor in that. They did highlight that in the movie, but in the grand scheme of things, if she decides that she's yeah. in love with him and wants to help him, she's not turning herself in. MI6 sure. is going to protect her better than well, I right. won't. Well, yeah, also, all, well that, all that information that she left behind for Bond, she had a shit ton more that she could have given them so they could have stopped the people that were trying to kill well, her or get her to I, give them the money. Well, you'll find out the organization's a lot larger and has their hands in a lot of shit more than it seems. I'm I'm just saying that if she decides <laughs> Wait, hold on. Spoiler alert! Sorry. I, I'm just saying, if she decides it's she... It's fucking Spectre! Because they end up getting the rights later, although they don't call it Spectre right now. They have it under a different name. I'm just... But then it becomes Spectre. I'm just saying that if she decided she wanted to help the positive side because she was in love with Bond, she I, I, didn't have to turn herself in. If I she think... decided that she was going to give the money over and betray Bond, she didn't have to leave him the tools. The difference between the two different things that were done don't make sense with all of the other context you have, and I really think that's shitty. Well, in the, well, in the book, she basically explains that she commits suicide so that way they don't go down hunting Bond down. My, uh, of the movie is that they kind of combine that and add it as in, like, okay, she knows that, uh, she's probably going to die when she gives them the money. Maybe it will probably buy Bond some time to actually do investigation. <sighs> because I... you actually do find out in the next one, uh, that, that, uh, Quantum Totally not Spectre. Quantum. <laughs> it looks... It only looks like Godzilla, but it's not. Because due to copyright laws. Um... Uh... Is, uh... In MI... Has people in MI6. So... I, I just... Like, just... The, what we know now, having watched this movie, right. like to take it as an isolated incident, the two different actions she portrays do not line up with this, the this, this she is has. why my biggest complaint about the Daniel Craig films is that they're all fucking connected, and it's like I shouldn't have to watch the sequel to be like, oh, I get that, and the other one, you know. Uh, that's fair, but I, I guess which, I don't which, know which that I'm where going we're to at. bitch about with Spectre. Fair enough, fair enough. I, 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 I will get there when we get there. But uh, as for now, let's do ratings, rankings, yeah. and move on because we're already an hour and ten into this. Yeah, this is long. All right, uh, uh, Haley, I'll start with you. Um, I know you've watched most of these, so if you want to give it like a general grouping, if you want to give it a ranking out of ten, however you want to play it, like give us your overall thoughts on the movie. I, I mean, like I said, it's probably one of my favorites, so it's in the top at least three if I were to have a list, because I don't have a list. <laughs> I hated them all. Um, <laughs> you didn't hate them all. I, you're just no, like, I think you did. You're just like, I, this is this I one's okay? I didn't hate them all. I just hated the the first several. Um, <laughs> At all the ones with Sean Connery. <laughs> Every single one. But no, I, I think that this one was probably 
one of them, if not my favorite, that I've seen so far. So it's okay. pretty high up there on that list. Okay, uh, Stallman ranking hit me. It's a fucking tough one. This is a real tough one for me. Because here's the thing. All right. I really love the book. I really like this. This is one of like Fleming's like best freaking books. Uh, I thought it translated to film rather great. Um, I think it's really well put together despite that it dragged. And it's like Haley says it's definitely top three. And if I remember right, from Russia with Love and I also, of course, OHMSS, they both dragged at parts. And it's tough for me to really think like which one's like a better movie out of those three. And uh, I think I'm actually going to have to go like um, I'm actually going to have to put this at number one. I really, wow. I really am. All right. I really am. Just because, like, there's so many, uh, with the writing, with, like, how many, like, uh, details that are thrown in there, and that it's able to throw people off, even if they're given the carrots for said thing, it's just, it's just, even though it's, there are, like, flaws with, like, pacing, uh, the other two f movies, like uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, had problems with pacing, and From Russia with Love even had some problems with pacing as well. And to me, like, I think like the story, ha the build up between Bond and Vesper, with that story between them two, and also with like the story between the other characters, everybody's fleshed out. Everybody kind of has their own arc that at this moment I will have to say it's probably my favorite one so far that we've huh. seen. I I am impressed you put it that high. I I really am. Um I'm not far behind I you. was not I, I I originally wasn't going to, but like I was thinking about it all day long and I'm like <laughs> And it just bumped up there. I'm probably gonna hate myself for putting it there, uh, but at, I, at, genuinely, the same, at the genuinely, I don't blame you for putting it there because I think this had a very strong pull for number one for me. However, however, um, the reason I'm gonna put it where it is, uh, movies that I have watched have had one cohesive plot line. I haven't had the detractions from those that I have had from these, uh, from this one rather. Um, I, I. This was a very, I very... I swear to fucking God, if, if it's no, below the man with no, the golden gun, no, I am no, going down to South nope. Carolina and throwing a boot at you. Oh, you'd have gone too far, so fuck you. Uh, <laughs> the, no, the, 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 like, had this movie ended at a minute and 45 minutes, when we finished the first plot line, this would be number one, there'd be 50 feet of shit, and then there would be From Russia With Love. And that's not even to talk shit at From Russia With Love. I'm putting this at third between Octopussy and Thunderball. And the only reason I'm doing that is because of the way we got two additional plot lines that felt extraneous at the end that it was not one cohesive movie. That, that Genuinely, this was fantastic. I hated, I hated putting this so high because I didn't want to be biased about, well, Daniel Craig's the best because he's the one I grew up with. They gotta be the best ones and they're the newest, so they're the best. I didn't want to do that. And I tried to be really, really, really reasonable and fair. And I think the specific detractions I had from this movie I ha I have to put it third not a bad spot and to be honest like like that gets it, it like Casino Royale is highly revered like it's not like usually like number one in most people's lists like honestly what you have at number one Ted from Russia with Love is usually the number one on people's lists so, like, uh, the only other one that I've known that I've known to see people like knock from Russia with love down is Skyfall, but we'll see when we get there. Yeah. Although I do, I I do will say this: if it doesn't beat from Russia with love, I still think you're gonna like it. I I I genuinely think that the way that uh, Daniel Craig portrayed this character, 
I I have very, very, very high hopes for the way that the next few movies are going to go. Um, I mean, it was a unique character. Everything was well written. Everything was thorough, and and it was it was genuinely a really, really, really good film. Um, I I don't want to set my standards too high for what future yeah, films can be, but I also wanted to be fair about what it was for the times and the complete picture of it all and and that's why i have to put casino royale third yeah i i will say this the next movie is not as good as casino royale but i i'm i like it like i said we'll cross that bridge when we get there uh we've gone way fucking longer than we've gone in any of these podcasts so yeah. far so i'm gonna wrap this up uh, yeah uh, by the way we're not doing we're not doing uh uh Quam solace next we are uh the next episode is gonna be casino royale 67 and then the episode after that's casino royale 54 so all right. Uh, for just wanted to just wanted to warn people that Fair. so that way, you know Fair. they're not expecting Quantum of Solace. They're they're getting the other two Casino Royales, and the reason why we have the other two Casino Royales after this one is because of the Vesper turn. She does turn in Casino Royale sixty seven. So I didn't want the twist ruining ruined on a parody. Mm. Uh, first things first for my wrap up, uh, Stallman, I want to congratulate you because while this was not your lowest number of us ever, it was lower per minute than it's ever been and by a lot. So I'm very, very proud of you. I know I missed a ton, but it's still proud of you. Uh, anyway, <laughs> first off, thanks to our guest Haley. You can check her out on Twitch. Haley underscore bug 18. Correct. Yep. Nailed it. Okay. Uh, check her out on Twitch. Uh, real good streamer. Lots of fun. Hangs out with us all the time. Uh, check us out on Twitch, both Stallman and I, Stallman at Truductus, and myself at Ted Green Hi. Eagles. Uh, check out the rest of the Discord for a whole lot of other CCG streamers, a whole lot of other content, such as Mike's Music Podcast, Let's Plays, uh, YouTube Video Streamers, uh, d the whole damn thing. Just please just check it out. If you want to find other people to play games with, just do it. Um, otherwise, uh, I think by the time you watch this, we'll have two or three Bond movies to watch. Uh, I think we're beyond Skyfall right now, and... Um, that is if you're watching it while uh, this gets uploaded. Uh, right. in future, in the future, we'll probably already got through all these. But um, <laughs> I will say if you do have like a uh, um, if you are able to catch us watching like the last few Bond films, uh, Haley's quips into all these movies <laughs> is rather fucking entertaining. Uh, yeah, Lots absolutely. Of <laughs> uh, the last thing I want to say is that uh, Stallman and I have had a whole lot of fun doing this podcast. Um, we're looking for other series or suggestions of series to watch uh, in future seasons of this, I guess. Uh, we've <laughs> talked about specific directors, specific franchises of films. If you guys have any ideas, please leave them in the comments. Let us know in Discord, whatever the, whatever the case is. If there's something else that you want us to watch that isn't just a one-off movie, please don't fucking do that to me. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys. Appreciate y'all for watching, and we will see you next week. Yep. Later. Bye.